Hello friends, my name is Alyssa and I'm the Science Program Manager at Boston Children's Museum. December is a special time of year with lots of fun holidays and festivals. You probably know about Christmas and Hanukkah. There's lots of other holidays to celebrate too and almost all of them involve light. So today, in honor of all those holidays that celebrate light, we are going to make candles at home. Pardon me for interrupting myself, but there's something I need to tell you before we get started. Snow Amazing, our annual winter extravaganza, has arrived at Boston Children's Museum. And it's thanks to our friend, Jack Frost. Jack has brought fun, friends, and festivity to some of your favorite exhibits, turning them into a winter wonderland. Try your feet at sock skating. Be sure to visit the Winter Village, and you gotta check out the giant wonder tree. And there's lots more besides. You can get your tickets online at bostonchildrensmuseum.org slash ticketing. Now we can get started on today's activity. So you may think that making candles is really complicated, but it's not really. And you can use stuff that you probably have in your house already. There may be one thing that you might need to buy, but everything else you might just have at home. So let's go through the materials. First, you'll want your old candles that are almost completely dead or the wick doesn't work or they're just too short to use, or maybe they broke. Gather up all those candles. And then you'll need crayons. Broken crayons, old crayons, ones you don't like anymore. Those are great. Get the wrappers off. I found that the easiest way to do that was to soak them in warm soapy water for just a minute, and then they peel right off. Other things you'll need, an empty can, a soup can, a tomato can, anything like that, an old can like this one. You'll need candle wick. This is the thing that you might have to go out and buy, but it's not very expensive. You'll need some kind of molds for your candles. You can use the votive that your candle was in you can use glass jars. Here's another container that a candle came in. Or you can do what I did. I just used plastic Dixie cups. You'll also need some larger plastic cups, like these Solo cups. A chopstick or some stirring thing that you don't care about if it gets ruined. So maybe a plastic spoon or knife, a chopstick, something that it doesn't matter. You might also want to have on hand some rags, newspaper, wax paper, things like that to cover the surface where you're working, just in case you get any spills. And this one definitely needs a grown up because we're gonna be using the stove and the melted wax gets very hot. Oops, sorry, I forgot a few things. You'll need scissors and masking tape or duct tape or something like that. If you're using Dixie cups, you'll need to poke a hole in the bottom. So you'll need a tool to do that with. I'm using the awl in my pocket knife. If you're using an existing mold or a glass jar, you'll need to get this kind of wick that you stick to the inside of the bottom of the mold. And no matter what kind of mold you're using, you'll need a sturdy big paper clip. Okay, let's get going. First, take your crayons and smash them up into little pieces. Then you'll need to gather up your wax. If it's in some kind of container, you can use a plastic knife or something to dig it out. Then put your wax into your soup can. You can put your can of wax right on the stove, or if you prefer, put it in a pot of water. Just make sure that no water gets into the can of wax. Don't leave the wax unattended. Keep stirring it 
and adding more wax until it is entirely melted. Use your awl or whatever sharp thing you're using to poke a hole into the bottom of the cup. Don't make it too big, just big enough for the wick to fit through. Measure the wick against the Dixie cup and leave some extra so that you actually have a couple inches of wick to burn. Cut it off and carefully thread it through the cup. This can definitely be a little tricky. Pull it through so that there's a little bit of wick poking through on both ends and then use the paper clip to hold the wick in place. Then secure it with tape on the bottom. This will also help keep the wax from leaking. If you're using a mold or a glass jar or something that you can't stick a hole in the bottom, stick your wick to the inside of the bottom of the container and then use a paper clip to hold it upright the same way we did here. Now it's time to color your wax. Put your broken crayons in a larger cup, one color in each cup. You can mix the colors if you want. Maybe you want to make green, but you don't have a green crayon. You can try using a smashed up blue and a smashed up yellow crayon. When you're ready, pour some of the melted wax into one of the cups and stir it until the crayon melts into the wax and the color is evenly distributed. Then pour the colored wax into your molds or Dixie cups or whatever it is that you're using. I'm making candles that are striped. So to do that, I pour one color and let it set before adding the next color. Let your candles completely harden. Depending on how big they are, that can take a few hours or you might want to let them sit overnight. If you made your candles in the old containers, you're done now. If you used a Dixie cup, now you can just peel it away from the outside of the candles. I was surprised at how easily this worked. Decide which end of the candle is the top and which is the bottom, and snip away the wick from whatever you decide is the bottom of the candle. Well, check it out. I love how my candles look. I love the colors. I like that I turned it upside down so it doesn't look like a cup anymore. You could really have fun with this. One of these, I tried swirling the wax together and it didn't swirl very well. But maybe if I do this again, I'll experiment with that some more. I hope you had fun making crayon candles at home today. Keep checking back for more activities on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And I will see you next time.